Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Guys, welcome back in for the finale. I think it's the finale. I always do this and often I realize that how I am ends up prolonging playthroughs way longer than they're supposed to be. I think this is going to be the last video. Let me just start with I think it's going to be the finale. It might not be. And if it isn't, then I... What else do you expect when you click on a video from me? that and rambling with that guys if this is the last episode we are finishing up regardless the last kind of pieces last episode was huge we actually successfully uncovered i'm so glad i went back and retraced my steps we uncovered the ash twin project like going under into the spin we also have a kill switch too i mean it's not really a kill switch well yeah i mean we know how to put an end to the ash twin project however i didn't click on it because i'm just a little worried that that's going to end the game because where my head's at is if we pull the ash twin project then we won't keep coming back alive like we won't be reliving the same day over and over again which yes is our objective but not without finding all of the truth nothing but the truth correct right so we still have a few things left to do we're going to be revisiting that core uh the probe that got launched the piece of the cannon that fell into uh giant's deep we're going to be going back to the cannon because there's apparently two things we're missing there or just things we're missing i should say in two of those pieces um and outside of that we have to return to Dark Bramble for the vessel and for the missing pod. If I had to guess, it's going to take a couple attempts. So I'm going to save you guys the pain and misery of watching me go super slow through it. If I end up having to redo it multiple times after the first time, I'm just going to be bringing you guys to that point where we're getting uh, <laughs> back to, I guess. Uh, and then after that, I assume we're going to go back and pull the cord on the Ash Twin project and see what happens. And that's kind of it. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this playthrough. I will definitely talk more to it at the very end of whether it's this video or the next video, just how much I've loved this game. I'm not joking when I say that it is plaguing my mind, like in a positive way. I guess when you put plaguing, it makes it sound kind of bad. But this game has made me think more than I think the average playthrough. I mean... I think every time I'm playing through a game, but it is sometimes rare when a game comes outside of my like recording sessions or my streaming sessions and I'll be having dinner and something pops into my head or I'm dreaming and I have a dream that's related to it. And so in that regard, this game has held an incredibly special place in my heart. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it all comes together. And yeah, I just really hope you guys have enjoyed this playthrough. So without further ado, Let's get on to the most likely finale. Look, look, Echoes of the Eye. I did install the DLC. I know a couple of you guys had mentioned that it was not on here. For some reason, I thought I did have it. I didn't realize it was something separate. So you know how sometimes like the DLC isn't sold separately. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe I'm crazy with this. But anyways, we have Echoes of the Eye. Um, I'm going to get in gargoyle position for this ending. And we're just going to dive straight into it. Happy Monday. It's Monday for me. I don't know what day you guys are watching this. Definitely not on a Monday since I don't upload those days, but. And there's the cannon that launch and such is so what that 22 minutes we have to go. We'll get to the ship. I'll just remind you guys visually for all of my visual learners out there where we're headed, what we're doing, what we're seeing, and then We'll head over. So let's just do a quick little run through. Sun station. Done. Ember twin. Done. Ash twin. Done. Timber hearth. Now done. Esker and Addle Rock. Easy peasy. Oh. I forgot about Hollow's Lantern. I guess I probably should go there. I wasn't really thinking about that and I thought we had landed on it. Huh. <laughs> There's got to be a trick to Hollow's Lantern, depending on where you are in the time cycle. You know, the same thing with others. I'm wondering if... Hmm. Hmm. There's got to be a specific time to land on Hollow's Lantern. Maybe we should beeline for there and just go ahead and see and explore it in its entirety. Giant Steep. Done. This. Not done. And then, of course, Bramble, the bane of my existence. Then we have Whitehall Station, which has been completed. 
And we have the ruptured core. I forgot about that. I think we'll do the interloper first. Well, let's do this. Let's hop on over and try to land on Hollow's Lantern and see if there's anything new for us to do there. And then we'll go over to the interloper. Oh, although the interloper is completely tied to where it is directionally from the sun because we need it to melt. Don't forget. Quantum Moon is done as well. So, just a few last little bits to clean up here and there. Okay, I'm getting choked with my own headset. Um, I would say, let me see where the interloper is in relation to the map. Okay, let me put this on first. And here we go. Where is the interloper? All right, the interloper is on a constant trajectory. We need to hit it when it's getting closer to the sun. I would say we prioritize that. Uh, no. Let's go do lantern. The lantern. Should be up and over. Is it this way? Eee, there we go. Uh, there's Giant Steep. I know we're gonna head over there here soon. There we go. And our autopilot is working, so let's head over to Hollow's Lantern and just hopefully we can find something that makes it at least show up on our map as discovered. Let's go ahead and see where that interloper is. We have some time with the interloper, but not a ton of time. This is just so strange to me. I, I'm not exactly sure how we're really supposed to get anything, unless maybe there's... We've landed on it before, and I'm wondering if the more time that passes, the more this specifically we're able to... Right, because if it's... Hear me out. If it's tossing out lava, then that means more is being dispersed, which means there would be less on like less of it on the the whatever it is moon is that a moon the moon planet itself so maybe what we've been doing wrong is we've been visiting it too early in the cycle so let's what the hell wait a minute when did i just float into <laughs> i'm going to the interloper and then we'll come back yeah let's head over to the interloper yeah, because we have to be ready to get inside. Also, because of how quickly it freezes back up, it is possible. I have cat hair everywhere. It's possible we'll only be able to do the interloper during this specific cycle. Mm -hmm. I want to look up more about the audio that they chose for this and how they... Man, it, it feels like it's... land. Not the best, but not the worst. Alright, hopefully it stays. Now for us, where are we at? Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Alright, let's go ahead and fuel up on everything. Dive down and we gotta get to that. Was it the northern side, correct? Or no, it's just the uh, crevices here. Yeah, I think just right here, these crevices should warm up and melt away as soon as we get closer to the sun should be happening here soon. Yes. So clever. Here it goes. We're starting to get that melting. Let's watch it happen. Where are we? Wow, that actually happens pretty quickly. Okay, so we're going to... Alright, we are officially inside. Time we should cycle back through the sun one more time. Let's head on in here. Ghost matter, beware. Right, so let's really use that scout launcher here. Something that I didn't do too much. Look, 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 look. We've gotten down to at least that point. Yeah, we've gotten down here. Hmm. Which is why it tells us this is a better route to go. So maybe there... Yeah, so that just came around like a circle. We need to try the right hole. Maybe that was the problem all along. Was that I was... I need to make sure I have this on. 
We did read this. I remember that. But for some reason, it's not coming alive. Hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this back. And we're going to launch it down and see where it goes. It goes through. And then it lands. Hmm. There's a total of four possible entryways, right? I wonder what the effects of the sun are on the ghost matter. Nope, this would destroy us too. Correct? Yeah. We've jumped through one before. The first time we went here. It was actually the area after this that we died the most from. Look, there you go. Oh wait, no. Yeah. That is a safe route. That's the one that we went through. So the first time I came through here, I just happened to jump through the right one. Yep, and you can see that that's that. So that means the only route we can take is right there, and I'm terrified. Oh, gosh. How did I do it last time? Did I just go for it? I think I just went for it. Yeah, we, we saw it. We have to make sure we go through the right way, too. Just doing a nice little skatey skate. Okay, and then we want to stop here. Because the last time I did this, and that's going to show you what will get you killed. And then it just, it's this like giant pit of ghost matter. So I'm going to be completely honest, I'm not quite sure what we're supposed to do about this. I, I wouldn't be able to safely jump through that. But maybe you're never supposed to. Maybe we were supposed to go that way. Okay, that's actually really cool. Maybe we're supposed to go this route. Wait, wait, let's see. Always drop a little scout and see. Nope, nope, nope. Hazardous, hazardous. Hazardous, hazardous. Head back to the safe spot. I bet you when we go near the sun, it might possibly unfreeze some of this area. So maybe you have to go through twice, or if you know exactly the right direction to go to, then you can get there in time. But yeah, maybe the sun will melt some of this away. Because that's the hazard we can't go through. And we can't head back. We came from that route. We're gonna have to wait. Yeah, I'm not willing to test that. But even if you go down there, like, let's send, the, send him down here. Look at this. Like, there's... What am I supposed to acquire down there? There's a lot more ghost matter. Oh, there's the Nomai. Look, you can see them. You can see the bodies. Huh. Right. The only possible thing I think we could even do with this is just seeing what happens when we get near the sun. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for you guys, and I will bring you right back when we get closer to the sun, okay? Okay, this is why we don't do that. Okay, ignore me. While I was doing this, okay, I don't know if I'm right or onto it or anything like that, guys, but welcome back, welcome back. Uh, right here, right? This is where we came from. So this is where I was just going to wait. I was just going to wait it out, and then I was like, well, I was sitting there thinking about it while I'm waiting for this, and I was like, man, this is gonna, I'm gonna run out of oxygen before I'm even able to get down there. So then I hopped up here, cause this is where we came from, right? This little loop-de-loop -loop with the swoop do swoop But then I was like, did we, I don't know. I was getting confused where I came from, where I went, Cotton Eye Joe, but I don't remember this. Is this where we came from? So then I was like, well, maybe, no way. I think we have to follow the scout. The scout's still going. No, 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 no. Back up, back up, back up. Look at look at all of this. Okay. Bring scout back. So going down here, right? We have to go to the right. Then we have to go to the left. 
and then it gets blurry and I have no idea what we're supposed to do. But I think we can successfully traverse this. It was never about just ignoring the ghost matter entirely. You just have to make sure that you don't end up. But then look at this, then it's massive. Then it's all like that period, but wait, go back. Okay, he just landed. I kind of want to test it. I'm willing to kind of test it. The whole thing's with this is just we're testing if it's the sun, like if being near the sun is going to make it less. I guess we can even see if anything happens. So we have to go right side, then left side. And just follow where the scout goes, right? Because the scout will naturally go. Not true. The scout will go wherever we launch it. So he's traveling. We're traversing down a cave. And then this is where it gets a little crazy as we see this massive circle. Hmm. We are getting closer to the sun, but I don't, I don't, <laughs> I feel like I don't have a lot of oxygen anyway. So let's just try my original thought with the sun. We'll try my original thought with the sun and then we'll try up there as like a last ditch effort, you know? Still hazardous, still very, very hazardous. We'll see when we get closer. We should start feeling the effects of the sun pretty, actually we should have had them by now. If the sun was impacting this in any sort of form or fashion, it would have happened already. Which means we gotta go this way. Wait. Wait. Wait a minute. It hasn't been 22 minutes, I was gonna say. Yeah, it hasn't been 22 minutes. It sounded when we were getting near the sun like we were gonna die. Okay. Right, left. Which is why you can kind of skate. Okay, I'm going. I'm so gonna die, I'm so gonna die, I'm so gonna die. Go through, go left, left, left! <laughs> Wait, my vitals. <laughs> you have to actually have some restraint. Cause if you saw, I went through the ghost matter but it wasn't dangerous, so we were fine. All right, I will see you guys on the other side when I'm back here. And I'm back. All right, we're getting melting and it's time to go. Okay. I cannot mess this up again because this actually does take just about 20 minutes or so. No, I think, no, I think it probably took 10 minutes, but even still, if I make any more mistakes, I will keep having this happen. So I wanna try this. I wanna try just walking through it. Yep, sure enough. You can walk straight through the non-dangerous type. I feel like I just learned a huge secret to it. And I'm sure that that was described or mentioned at some point in time by the Nomai. And I do just want to remind people that there is so much information or so many clues or pieces of information that lead to every single part in this. And it's hard to remember all of it. Okay, so we are going to rein it in. I still shouldn't spend too much time there. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm not exactly sure where we should go now. So I'm gonna actually hold off. We're gonna take it very slow. And I'm gonna try to zoom up here and just wait here. Okay, so. Is that the same hole as before? Wait a minute. Am I in the same spot that I was just a second ago? No. That's a Nomai right there. There's a Nomai. This is all new. Succumb to the ghost matter. Oh my goodness. And that is where the other one is. All right, and if I go this way, I'm pretty sure I'll die. But let me double check. Oh. There's two Nomai that, um... What's this way? This is where we came from. And that is just a big old pile of hazards, so this is pretty much the only way we can go. I'm a little concerned that I'm gonna fall on this and die. Whoa! 
This pit is... No, 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 not, not towards the ghost matter. What is happening here? The gravity. The gravity. Wait. There's a lot of ghost matter, so we need to be careful. Oh my gosh. The translator. The spherical stone casing here seems to be the source of the energy readings. No, rather the source is what is within the stone. I'm detecting some form of exotic matter. The stone is muting our energy readings. They should be ten times what we're seeing, at least. Pokey. Pi, I, I don't think we want this matter interacting with us. As far as I can tell, direct contact with it would almost certainly be fatal. I've never encountered anything like this casing, but it's all that's protecting us from what's inside. Worse still, this matter is disturbingly volatile. Pi, whatever the matter inside this stone casing is, it's more than just profoundly unstable. It's under tons of pressure. Look at this density scan. I've never seen anything this tightly compacted before. What is this? This is orders of magnitude worse than I'd imagine. If the stone were to rupture, the lethal matter within would rapidly expand, completing blanketing the star system almost instantaneously. And the pressure is still building as the comet approaches the star system. Return to the shuttle right now. The rest of our friends need to know they're in terrible danger. Leave your equipment and run. What are you doing, Pi? The more we know about alien matter, the better our chances are of survival. I will learn what I can here. Go, warn the others. Maybe they can construct shelter somehow. Now, Pokey. But didn't Pokey end up dying? I thought Pokey ended up dying. Wow. Um. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think I want to land on this. I think it just kind of made that clear. I'm pretty sure that's everything we really need to learn here. And I think if I touch this stuff, I will most certainly lose it. But how am I supposed to get... Oh, no, my body. I would die if I went back through there. Oh, I can go up through the crevice that I came. It is possible to get back. I would just have to wait. I'm actually going to touch it. I'm going to touch it because we came all this way and... That's it. See if there's anything else to uncover here. So this is it. Wait. Yeah, dangerous. Super, super dangerous. Huh. Okay, you guys, I think that's pretty much everything we're gonna learn from this. So we need to go back up, which we came. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get another sun's... Like, I already had to wait for a second one. Like, the first time I came up here, I was able to do it right away. But they didn't make it. There were three of them, right? Because the other one, that's right. So if you remember, there were three that crashed here on this shuttle. However, one was supposed to wait in the car. I can't remember exactly which one it was. One was meant to wait in the car, but they weren't able to. Or the car, the shuttle. One was meant to wait in the shuttle. Hold on. I have to figure out which way the talks is here. I need to come back through the right way. That's the dangerous route. So we can go this way. And then it should be that way. But this feels just like where we were before. So this just takes me to a different route. No, 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 I'm able to successfully come up here. These caves are easy to get lost in. And then our way back is through here. Or, well, not down there. Our way back is down, but over to the side. Um, yeah, they, actually, where the heck am I going? 
I might restart the day. No, I think it is over here. And then you just stick to the left. You have to stick to the left instead of going to the right side. You have to go this way. Yeah, safe route here. Man, I would have figured this all out when I first initially came here if I wasn't so worried about the ghost matter. We had read this and I think that's what, wait, it's allowing me to read it now. Yeah, we we did read that the first time around. Uh, the day is gonna be shot here in a second. That's the right way. I think. Right, now I'm stuck here until the sun goes back around. Yeah, so there were three and one of them... Oh! Oh, I'm skating. Uh, I can't remember. I want to say it was Pokey. I think Pokey didn't want to stay in the shuttle. I think they really wanted to go warn the others or they just didn't feel right about just keeping the space shuttle warm. And so they must have come in after the two. Because we did find, did we find three bodies or two bodies? Having to use a lot of fuel here. It's thinning. I think it's starting to thin. I'm going to try to bop over with what little time we have left in the day. Oh, shoot. I'm having to use fuel. I will just switch to oxygen, worst case scenario. Um, I'm going to try to bop over to... Uh, the hollow, hollow's lantern. Come on, melt, baby! I probably should just stop resisting. Here we go. Melt! I don't understand, it should be melting by now. Oh, snap. I couldn't even get- I can't even get up because I'm using oxygen. No! I can't get up though. Because I'm using fuel, is it? Well, wait. Wait, let me get up. Where's my ship? Where's my- ah! <laughs> Wait a minute. Of course. That's what's causing it. Holy cow, I think that's it. It's not that the sun has run its course. It's not that, like you saw, the sun station didn't successfully cause the sun to explode. The sun is exploding because of the center of that interloper. The interloper can work its way around the sun three full times, which it takes about seven minutes each, which if you times that by three is about 22 minutes. So the interloper with whatever matter, the ghost matter, right? Is that what the giant shell, whatever that giant shell was, that's what's causing the sun to explode. It was nothing that they created. I was trying to wrap my brain around why the sun was like exploding at this point in time. And I thought that maybe it had just run its natural course, but no, the interloper and what's inside of it is causing the explosion. It was a good thing we stayed on that. Oh my gosh. The Nomite traced the strange energy readings to the spherical stone casing filled with some form of exotic matter. They determined the exotic wait, they, they determined that the exotic matter was both lethal and under extreme pressure. If the stone were to rupture, the exotic matter within would would rapidly expand, ex, uh, completely blanketing the solar system almost instantaneously. One of the Nomai stayed behind to examine the alien matter while the others rushed back to the surface to warn the rest of the Nomai, but it must have been too late by then. Oh my gosh. Wow. Which is different than the ghost matter for the record, that giant casing, otherwise we would have died when we landed on it. Wow. That is another mystery solved and another piece to our puzzle. Uh, we're gonna head back to the launch module this day and the probe tracking module. <laughs> and hollows, we do have to do hollows as well. Okay, I do have to run to the bathroom. I know there's a lot of breaks up in this video, but... <laughs> wow. Actually, it was a good thing that I took that time then. I was thinking it was a pain in the butt that I was having to go around so many times, but wow, wow. Okay, I will be right back, hold on. Buckle up. So I think the best way to go about this... Also, by the way... Wait a minute, did you see that? 
What is that? What? This has always been here, hasn't it? We've always had that, um... I never th- what? What is that? Has it always been here this whole entire time? Am I just now seeing that? What was it? This isn't the- Is this the probe for the eye of the universe? Um, I was just- Okay, I was just gonna say. Mmm. I was just gonna say. I think we'll do the cannon before going into o Ocean's Deep, but this is what can I match velocity with it? Yeah, I can match velocity. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this one of our this isn't this isn't one of our satellites, is it? What? That's one of my people's journals. Wait a minute. Gabro here. Checking in on the deep space satellite. Okay, per ground controls request. I forgot that we even had a deep space satellite. See, Hornfells, I do do work. We should go back to the museum, guys, and just double check on everything. When I was reading the museum episode number one, there was no way that I was going to retain all of that information that I had been picking up and knowing that I was going to, yeah. You know, I wouldn't mind being a satellite. It's peaceful out here, among the distant stars and soft, velvety darkness. Bet it's mm, awfully nice for naps, too. Oh, right, the lens. All right, little satellite, let's see what the trouble is. Hmm. Everything looks A-OK, -okay. ground control. No dust or scratches on the lens, and no evidence of sparking or violent explosions. Guess that rules out equipment malfunction after all. Hear that, pal? You're in great shape. Keep up the great work out there. I didn't realize that that was going to be a signal. <laughs> sure enough. Deep space satellite. Another frequency detected. Wow. Cool. Well, I reckon that's pretty much it, right? <laughs> that's so cool. I wish I had discovered that sooner. I mean, not that it would have made a difference, but... I guess I will say that one of the nice parts about getting further... Does that open up anything? No. I think one of the really nice parts about this in the first place, though, is that... It doesn't, like, check off or anything. Huh. Yeah, I, I actually really enjoy having less things to look at, or there's, like, less to do, right? Uh, we're headed over here. Yeah, there's, there's less stuff to do, because you've already done so much, so it actually becomes easier to identify, I think, things that stand out more, because you're not so overwhelmed by the vastness and just quantity of things in front of you to discover and understand. Okay, so let's go ahead and match velocity with... We're gonna let myself fire these retro rockets. Go into matching velocity. Okay, and then we're gonna go down here. So, we are trying to... Well, we're trying to land here first, and I'm kind of coming in pretty hot. I hate when it's... I wish there was... I mean, the headlights are... The headlights... I mean, I guess they they work fine enough, but... Little subpar, if you ask me. Okay. Perfect. So let's just double check what we're kind of looking for here. This part right here... The launch module is badly damaged, but its projection pool is still intact. There's more to explore here. Maybe I missed it. Like, maybe... I don't know. So, launch pad, right? Brain. Yes, launch module and probe tracking module. Maybe now that I found the probe tracking module, there's more information that you can uncover in the launch module. I also have given up on my 
hope of thinking the game wants you to place projection pools together. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's it. I just, by the sheer amount of them, when I was in this part last time, I was like, oh, this is it. And I really thought I had figured it out, but I don't think that's it at all. This is the probe tracking module. Can I get my scout back, please? Launch module is badly damaged here. Okay. I also am on the final episode realizing that you can pinpoint where you want to go on the map. Which is why launch module is still starred. Because I said that I wanted to go there to my tracker. And so that's what it is doing, like a good... And I just missed it. I just didn't realize. You hate to see it, but you still see it. All right, into the crack. Hmm. Maybe there's a piece floating out in space, and maybe that's like what we're missing. Maybe you have to find it earlier on. I'm still just gonna place all of these. We'll reread. Imagine, Privet, the probe tracking module will be the first to know the coordinates of the eye, which we now know. You'll be the first to see them. I'm honored and terrified. You won't ask the orbital probe cannon to use so much power that it breaks, will you? Ugh. Fret not, my nervous friend. We only need to fire the probe once. Anyway, so who minds if it compromises orbital probe cannon's structural integrity? Slightly. I would mind, Mallow. I would mind, because we won't be capable of receiving our probe's data if the probe tracking module is destroyed. There is one floating, so let's... Maybe there was a second one floating all along. Oh! 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 Control module. This is the one that's in the other side. Yeah, the other side. Hold on, let's place this down. Whoop! I have a thought. I have a thought, and I think it's a good one. I think what I never did with this one that I was doing with the control module is forgetting that these rooms are all uh, ceiling. Like, they're making the most of it with ceiling and topside, so... Mallow, you better my, you're my better 50%. I know for a fact we've read this part. I do remember the construction yard. I remember this, but I'm just gonna go back through for my translation. It would be really cool to go back through and read all of this now that I have a better understanding of what's going on. Like, it would be a lot cooler. I can see what would be so appealing about a second playthrough. Okay, so... If I'm right about this, what we're missing... ...would be here. But maybe I did go up here. I don't know. I was thinking there might be one more piece. Like, one more piece floating. Like that. Maybe we can still- no, that's like completely broken off. I was wondering if we could grab the marble and do something. Hmm. <laughs> but all of these components for the most part are broken. And I think the marble is completely gone. Hold on though. Hear me out. What if when the day starts back over, this thing is just broken, right? What if when it just breaks, we're able to catch maybe a missing piece? Like, maybe there's a piece missing out in broken space or something. I'm gonna go out here. And maybe that's why we're missing it. Hmm. Because I know that there's something else here. And I just have a feeling it might be related to right when it breaks off. We might be able to see before it snaps completely apart, you know? Because... I'm wondering if, as this goes, more stuff floats out. Hmm. We tried using that piece. Did you see this real quick? What's, what happens? Where am I? <sighs> yeah, this is the inside piece. The inside piece. Hmm. I guess we could go into Giant's Deep. We might as well just head back. I don't see what I need here. 
I don't see anything else I really could possibly do at this current moment. But like I said, maybe part of learning is right when it breaks off. We'll come back here, no? Or we can see broken pieces floating off here. Not seeing anything, but it could be anywhere in space now, you know? Like it could be anywhere. Okay, I'm gonna head back to my ship. I see something there. What's that? No, that's just something glass, orange on the inside. Yep, yep. Okay, let's head over to the ship and then let's go into the control. Ah, control area. We gotta get this. This is like the last piece that I'm, that I really want to do before we spend our time in Dark Brittle. Uh, let me see if that checked off anything. The only thing I could possibly think of, yes, no. Remove head marker. Okay, so that's really weird. I know for a fact I had read those. Like, I think if I went back, you would even see I read them. I bet what happened is maybe that was right when I, maybe it was right when the, the sun broke, like the sun burst, the supernova. So maybe it just didn't count it. I, I, either way, we got it. No, my name Malu argued that it wouldn't matter if the canon's structural integrity was compromised since they only needed to fire the probe once. I remember reading that. Like, I really know. I know you guys keep saying to like reread things, but I really know I did. And no, my named Privet countered that they wouldn't be capable of receiving the probe's data if the probe tracking module was destroyed. Um, I've had to guess. It was either that or maybe in an effort to reset the day, I quit but it might not save your information. I'm thinking that if you just quit, it won't save whatever you discover sometimes possibly. So maybe that's what happened with the probe tracking module. So whatever worked, it worked. Whatever whatever it was, it worked. So let's head into Giant Steep. I don't know how much time we have left, but we'll give her a go. Whee! Whoa, a bit of a... Okay, wait, the game is not happy right now in this moment. Hold on. I think it's just, okay, now it's good. Just having a little bit of a loading problem. All right, we're getting a lot of clockwise tornadoes. We're looking for that legendary counterclockwise. Um, there it is. There it is. Okay, send me up. Launch me. Perfect. Now you guys know the drill. This is a bit of a, it's a bit of a tough one because I need to basically be right inside of it. So we're going to go with this little marshmallow, this guy. Velocity matched with him. All right, dive down. We need to swim down. Swim down. Ow! <laughs> it's fine. You should be able to... Just a bit of a niche, you know, just a little... Okay, he's floating back down, so we need to go in. Here we go. Such an annoying part to it, though, because I hate this, I hate this! I hate this, I hate him, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I also feel like... Ah, I don't like it. I also hate not knowing like how to no like have a good oh, he's pushing me down he's pushing me down he's fighting me we're breaking it we're breaking it okay we're breaking through he's trying to break he's fighting me there's the electric barrier we've survived we've survived wait just a little bit more I think we're good. I think we're good. I hate this so much. Why can I not see anything? There's the station, get in the station. I better not have to do this again. I don't wanna do this again. I'm wondering if maybe there's another piece that broke off that I didn't see and I have to go scour the floor. <laughs> This is like does such a great job at making you feel uncomfortable if you don't like water or uh, 
<laughs> Darkness, unknown, everything. Boom. Okay, so again, there is some kind of information that we're missing here. Something. I gotta act fast as well. So let's pick up everything we can. Just do this again where we're reading everything just like the last time. I have exciting news, Privet. Oh, you know how we can tell when it's gonna happen? So our day will be gone when that interloper gets back to the sun. This is its second time around the sun, if I had to guess. Yeah, we have until that interloper gets back around, so we gotta work fast. I have exciting news, Privet. The Ash Twin Project is almost prepared to receive the probe data from the orbital probe cannon. Raimi is adding some finishing touches here, but she'll be finished soon. Are you in the orbital probe cannon well? We are. The statue here in the probe tracking module is ready to record each launch's flight trajectory and will automatically transmit all the relevant data to you. Once the probe determines the location of the eye of the universe, I'll send you an alert right away directly. On another appendage, I'm now worried that this canon's structural integrity and this cr and its crew's morality, or integrity as well, moral integrity. That was all that that one had to do with. Pick this guy up. Once again, it could be as simple as I probably went back to the main menu to avoid going back in the water, and I lost that capability. Like, it, it didn't track that I saw everything. Imagine, Privet, the probe tracking module will be the first to know the quiet- uh, Wait! I'm honored and terrified. This is the same conversation we saw at the other place. You won't ask the probe cannon. Fret not my nervous friend. I wouldn't- I wouldn't mind, Mallow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If that's the launch module, and we saw another launch module, my ship is in here. Hi! No, it's somewhere else. The- The orange and the blue. See, we had an orange piece of that. We had the orange piece of that that we placed down, and that's why we saw this conversation. So the blue is... Okay, it's too corresponding. I don't know why that took me forever to figure out. It was never you trying to match them up. Oh my gosh. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. It was never about matching them up. It's just simply that we're seeing both sides of a conversation. You know how many times I've probably read the same conversation twice and never noticed until really last episode and this one. <laughs> and that's why the ones that we place are always orange. And this is them... communicating with one of the twins <laughs> that um that makes a lot more sense will he do anything will he look at me okay so i had it back down here i feel like it all just makes sense now let's just make sure we do absolutely everything with this this is where we got the coordinates last time. We're just gonna double check and then we're gonna let ourselves get zapped and not restart the day. I might also go exploring in the dark. Something I don't wanna do, but sometimes you gotta do it. Receiving data from the probe, right? Visualizing, visual, blah, 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 visual, visualizing. Current trajectory of the probe, right? Hmm. Okay, let's carry it with us. So it was visualizing the trajectory. Then when we take him down here. This is the rope cannon and giant's deep. Nothing new. And also no new information. Is there anything to do? I don't think we're missing any other frequencies, right? Whoa! I don't think we saw that last time. I think that might be the missing information. I think I preemptively moved the marble because I didn't think I saw anything. Retrieving previous launch data from Ash Twin. Total number of probes launched. Deep space anomaly matching all known criteria for Eye of the Universe found by probe 9,318,000. That's it, ship log updated, that was it. I didn't wait long enough. Wait, let's see that again. 
Take it back, now put it back. So let's watch this happen. This is basically like showing you in like near real time. Then these lines start to go out. And then all of a sudden, so that's all the times they launched it maybe? Maybe that's representing like the nine billion times that they launched it or is it even more than billion? And then all of a sudden one of them hit. One of them hit. Yeah. It would be million, nine million, three hundred eighteen thousand and ninety-five. That was it. Holy cow. Let's let this one play out too then. We saw this and then it resulted with the coordinates to the eye of the universe, which we now have. So I don't want to stop the Ash Twin project. I want to be able to figure out how to get there. Retrieving stored coordinates from Ash Twin. Displaying coordinates of the eye. Let's also bring this back since we're just messing around until we get zapped because I don't want to have to venture back through. Let's bring it back here. So what happens in this one? Because this is the first one. And this the story is different. This puts it into perspective. Also, where are we at, by the way? Okay. And this is showing what? Showing what? This is showing the probe launching. I'm assuming that's the probe that was launched. Hmm. Whoop, 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 whoop. Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Yeah, that must have been the probe that was launched. So what I'm gonna do, that definitely should have finished the data there. So all of our areas are completed except for Hollow, um, Hollow's Lantern. So we will do Hollow's, Hollow's Lantern and then we will shift our focus completely to Dark Bramble. Yeah. That's a lot of probes. But they got the coordinates at the end of the day. Oh my gosh. Is that how many times this has been repeated? Like I'm thinking, is that how many times that this... No, that can't be. Oh man. All right, I'm gonna wait for this day to die out and then I'm going to be back with Hollow. Okay, I'll see you guys in a second. And we're back. I know this seems a little bit extreme on this episode, right? It's kind of the first time. It's probably a little bit jarring too because I know in previous episodes, I've really shown you guys the good, the bad, and a lot of the ugly and a lot of the time that I waste doing random things. But I figured by the last video, I've pretty much figured out that the way that time is passing makes a major difference on all accounts of ow. <laughs> on every single day that you're doing this and so it was pretty apparent that guy still needs to kind of sit for a little bit um we'll sit and watch him it became abundantly like clear to me that time plays a major factor in discovering a lot of this stuff when we saw the ice melt on the interloper when we needed to wait for the one piece of, I'm gonna sit by his ship because his ship hasn't gotten wrecked yet, so I believe this is a safe spot. Uh, when we saw the interloper melt, when we had to wait for Brittle Hollow to fall apart so that we were able to get inside of that one part and then also the twins. The twins are what really teach you that that 22 minute interval cycle is really making a big difference in everything across our our solar system and so right now we're kind of sitting here waiting for this to show more but basically I've decided I think and depending on where the interloper is all right this is gonna be his second time going around it might not even be till his third iteration that we're even able to land on that but all I know for a fact is this bad boy pops up on this map which means he's accessible he's hidden so he might not be accessible right now because of all the fire but you can tell that there was a time I landed on it and I didn't figure it out then because I hadn't realized that one, how much time we had in each day and two, that if it was 
giving off lava. That meant that it was leaving the crust, and I didn't realize that until the twins. So here we are. We're back here again, and we have a new entry with this. Let's finish it. There we go. The orbital probe cannon has launched millions of probes. The 9 millionth probe located a deep space anomaly, matching all the known criteria for the eye of the universe. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are left with Dark Bramble and also this little tiny piece. But that is it. That's it. Also, what is that, by the way? Do you see like the yellow sign? I don't know what that is yet but I'm looking forward to figuring it out. <laughs> it almost looks like, I wish you could even just hover over it, but you can't. So it makes me think either it's like DLC or, or something. I don't know. Rumor mode, right. Vessel and escape pod three, but we're still waiting for this guy to be easier to land on. Maybe we could get a closer look on it and just kind of watch as it gets easier. Hmm. So I feel like in a lot of ways, this episode feels like we're cleaning, we're a hundred percent cleaning up, but like it's flying by. But for me, it feels like <laughs> what you guys are seeing as probably and it'll end up being, look, there's, there's things being uncovered. Look, 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 look. For you guys, it's going to feel like two hours for me. It'll probably be four hours by the end of it because of everything, like all the time I've had to wait. Look at that. There's something in that. Did you see that? But, is it always going to be launching lava? We also have a predicament. I... Oh, can, I can lock... Okay, I can lock on. Just going to match velocity, kind of wait and... Watch him slowly. There, there's something in there. There's a platform I can land on in there. Let's try to get in there. Oh, no, 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 no. Back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. All right, we're gonna wait for him to launch one more time and then we're gonna, yep, I see a pillar. Oh yeah. Oh, get back in, get back in. Velocity, match velocity. Okay. Wait for him to kind of circle around again and launch the next one and then we'll try to swoop in. I was thinking you had to land on the crust itself, but I think you really just have to land inside one of the volcanoes. Right, here he comes. He moves fast, too. I wonder if I landed on it like this, if I could just kind of tiptoe into there? Like, I reckon my ship is going to get wrecked. Don't misunderstand me. My ship might fly off. But if I climb to the top, he just launched. Is this the right one, by the way? Is this even the right one? <gasps> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. There we go. Oh. <coughs> Wait, if it launches, do I get roasted? I should be fine, right? This is the Timber Hearth Projection Stone. Oh, it's launching. I am in fact fine. This was that first cave that we found. I guess I never realized I never came back here, did I? Wow. Um, so we want to place this stone in there. Whoa! Uh, I don't even have to be Anakin to find this terrifying and give you flashbacks. Increase solar activity detected. Increase volcanic activity detected. Location is now inhospitable. Evacuation recommended. At one point, friends in the timber hearth mines. The last type of ore you send us survives the longest in direct heat. Can you send us more of the same for additional testing? This must have been when they were making the sun station. We're attempting to improve its durability and our forge has already burned through everything you've sent. We'll deliver more ore to Hollow's Lantern immediately. You must be fired up about crafting Ash Twins Project's protective shell. Oh, the protective shell. My gratitude. I imagine we'll also have an updated estimate soon on how much ore is needed to seal off the Ash Twin Project. Will it be more than we initially thought? It will be significantly more. The smallest crack or opening in the protective shell would destroy everything. Root, yes, the idea of an encasement that's supernova proof, however, briefly, has kindled my curiosity. I can survive the supernova inside of the Ash Twin. We need to get back to the ship. 
That's how we do it. We wait for the supernova to happen inside of Ash Twin. Okay, before this explodes again, can I please land? No, no. Get back out. Get down. Get down. Oh gosh, oh gosh. All right. Beam me up. There might be more to uncover in others, so don't think that this is the last. We might have to explore more. Um, that could be another way to survive. Here we go. The, actually, that is a good point. Just to say that I've uncovered all of this doesn't mean we're not going to have more strains. Like you saw, that wasn't even showing until just now. Ore samples from the Nomai mines on Timber Hearth were sent to this volcano for durability testing. The Nomai were trying to craft a briefly supernova-proof shell to encase the Ash Twin project. Even the smallest crack or opening in the protective shell would destroy everything. And that's it. It doesn't say there's more to uncover here. That is officially it. We now just have Dark Bramble. I don't want to. Wow. Let me out. Let me out. Okay. Okay. We're pretty far into this day to be headed back to Dark Bramble. I don't... I'm gonna go ahead and quit. I'm gonna go ahead and quit and reset the day and hopefully... Yeah, it resets the loop. So it wasn't my prediction that when I reset the loop other times it like messed with it. Oh, that's terrifying. All right, Dark Bramble. I'm going to take you guys with me for my first trip, and we're going to hope that I can get through without having to deal with the anglerfish. My only hope as of right now is that red beacon. The red beacon is what we have to go for, which I keep getting snipped by an angler every time. But I'm so happy, guys. We have everything done. Everything except for Dark Bramble. Uh, wait. I might have just messed myself up real quick. <sighs> okay. Find Bramble. Bramble should be on the other side. There. Dark Moon. Dark Bramble is on the other side. So finicky. There he is. All right. Hopefully this doesn't take us too, too close to the sun. Aligning trajectory. And I have a feeling we might end up going into the sun. So I'm going to abort that trajectory. I'm going to head down. <laughs> and um, I'm going to go at this manual for a second. And now I feel better. Whew. What is that right there? Oh, is that the sun station? Do you see that? Wait, there's multiple little... What is that guy? Oh, the interloper. But what is that guy? White hole station. Me getting... <laughs> me asking and answering myself a second later. Okay. So, we cannot make a peep, guys. And I'm a little worried about this because... I thought we'd be able to use... I'm just... I'm scared to use the distress beacon. Because I feel like it's going to... But that would be the only way for us to... I'm just going to go after the red. I'm going after the red. Wait, we're going to start by matching velocity. When we go into this, guys, we have to slowly go like this. Like, we cannot... We can... Oh, shh. Okay. When we get in here, what we have to do is not use... I think we just have to zoom and hope we get there. But we need to slowly glide. Don't make an ounce. I'm just gonna glide. Oh, I'm not even moving. Okay, so we're gonna start out... By matching velocity, starting up a little bit like this, we are trying to go after that red. I'm going to give us a little bit of gas. And we're just going to slowly move through. And I'm going to try not to hit anything. 
and just go after that red beacon and it might take a while. But we're just gonna glide. I'm not messing with these anglerfish today. They scare the crap out of me. Maybe you just need to pick up speed. Maybe you could go at a fast pace, but you would just need to... Like, I'm worried even that noise is too much for the anglers. And we can also try to beeline for it if we get a little panicky. I think that's a real angler, by the way. Nope. Oh. Hmm. The slightest movement. He's gonna... I just wish they hadn't made the noise that they make. The noise is what scares me the most. That's not even where the distress beacon is. The red isn't even the distress beacon, guys. Y'all, red is not even distress beacon. This wasn't scary when I was going for Feldspar. But I feel like every other time I've been trying to track for... I'm scared to look elsewhere. Where is the distress beacon then? It's that way. I think we need to follow the distress beacon if we want to get to it. Oh gosh. That's an angler. Okay, I'm going. F it. He's gonna wake up and he's gonna see me and I'm gonna die. F it, I'm going in! He's here! Ah! <laughs> it took too long. It took too long. Okay, this is take two of me trying to make it through Bramble. Actually, it's probably like five at this point, but long story short, one, my stuff isn't working for my autopilot. I can match velocity, so we're good there. But two, I've got my earbuds out because it terrifies the heck out of me. It's not even the action of being eaten by the anglerfish. It's the sound. But other than that, I want us to find the distress beacon. And so in order to do that, I feel like my best chance to do that is aim for where it is. So we need to first get in here. So we start by just getting in here. I was trying to follow the red, but I don't think the red is actually it. Wait, the red is down there. See, I think the red is something else entirely. And I don't trust it. And also the distress beacon is kind of loud. It's a little bit loud. Okay, distress beacon looks like it's right there. So I'm gonna launch my seeker that way. So let's see what happens. Hmm. Okay, it's found a spot. And then it's smacked into Bramble. But it does have some sort of thing on it. So we're going to pick our speed up here. We're going to put this away. We are going to equip our signal and we are going to glide. I'm going to do this at a faster rate. So when I found Felspar, I did do a little bit of boosting, so I'm going to go back to that. I'm not going to be quite as cautious as I was in the last video that you saw because <laughs> I think we were speeding it up and everything. So I'm going to try to get a boost and go and we just got to remain eyes on the prize heading the direction of the distress beacon. We're losing it again. I was so worried that the anglerfish would hear our noise of the distress beacon. That's moving. That I think that's an anglerfish, guys. Maybe it's not moving. I don't know. We're going a little slow here. I'm just going to give a boost. Although an angler could have heard that and I'm screwed. It's the anglers. I'm wondering if there's more of that in the DLC. I posted on Instagram about this, but y'all terrified me with downloading the DLC you realize you're like, um, it warns you if you're scared of things to turn down something. All right, that's an orb. It's another orb we're gonna go through. 
but I think I'm going over top of it. Nope, nope, we're in a good, we're in a good situation. Um, I'm gonna go beyond it. I'm a little afraid. I think once you get into the core, the anglers can't go for you. So hopefully it just brings us in, into it. Hmm. Not hitting anything. We're kind of slowly headed that direction. Gonna bring us down a smidge. Okay, this is good. This is good. Bring me in. <sighs> I think it's gonna go further out, though. Like, we're gonna get there, but then it's gonna be like a thousand meters away now. Alright, let's zoom into it. We should be safe from an angler in this, you know, immediate moment. But be wary, because remember the last time there was an angler literally right there. Okay, Distress Beacon is once again a whole heck of a lot further away. We're talking 1,200 meters, so we're going to need to get a speed boost and then just let it ride. And we're going to get bumped. And I really screwed up there, and so I hope there's not an angler on his way to eat me. Where's the Distress? There. There. Okay. Speed up and glide. Speed up, glide. Speed up, glide. Oh my gosh. We're coming in hot. Shoot, there's something in our way. We're gonna have to give it a little... I'm gonna get smacked by this. There. Wait, is that Feldspar? Wait, that's not Feldspar. Uh, there's so gonna be an anglerfish on my tail in a second. I did it, I did it, I, I... I did it, I sped up a little bit. Mmm. They can probably smell fear. I'm not gonna move. I mean, on the bright side, that's it. That's the shuttle. Or, okay, we've done it. We've done it, but this is where something bites me in the butt. I wonder why, can I even land here? Can I even do something with this? I do not want to go out in the open. Is there an angler or something? So yeah, I'm worried about this. I, I don't trust this at all. Okay. Distress beacon intact. We officially have it. I'm gonna change the frequency. Sorry, I know that was probably so loud. Also, deep space radio. We have a new thing called a deep space radio. All right, I'm putting this back on and I just am going to hope we do not hear or see any anglers. Oh, match that velocity. Velocity matched. Remember, this is not the vessel, though. So we are not out of the woodworks when it comes to Brittle Hollow. I wonder how come I don't see any. Uh. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Relax. Feldspar likes it out here. Probably because he's found like the one safe zone. Okay, here it is. Uh, usually we can interact with the distress beacon, I thought. Or maybe we just identify it. Okay, match velocity with this. We're gonna go ahead and pull out. There we go. Escape pod three is done. Oh, man. Can you imagine being them crashing on this? Like, I think this is bad coming back here. It's nothing to what they went through. Seca. I don't think I've seen this name before. Our escape pod crashed as we tried to flee this place, destroying our movement and communication capabilities in the process. We've held out as long as we could here, but this pod's supply of breathable air is nearly depleted, and the anglerfish attack more and more frequently. Our best chance of survival 
is to return to the vessel to either repair the damage or probably await rescue. Seka, is the message finished? The vessel's beacon is already growing fainter. It will be gone in a matter of hours. We need to leave here quickly. How am I supposed to know how to get there then? If it's already... If it's already gone, how am I supposed to even get to the vessel? Okay, this is not ideal. Not ideal at all. Begin flight log. Escape pod 3. Vessel has been mortally injured. Emergency sequence activating awaiting departure vessel. Now launching escape pod 3. Multiple collisions have altered pod's trajectory. Significant damage to pod detected. Navigation error. Life support error. Propulsion error. Scanning external environment. Scan complete. Gravity not detected. Breathable air not detected. Multiple life forms detected. Potentially hostile. Do not enter. I think it's... There is a new problem. Our equipment is detecting two distinct beacons from the vessel. But it isn't possible for the vessel to be in two different locations at the same time. In this place it is. I agree, but the beacons are exactly identical to each other. Perhaps if I had more time. We're nearly out of time already. Din, the vessel's beacon is quickly fading. Soon it will be gone and we will be lost. We will follow the beacon whose source is nearest to us. But suppose that beacon is false. Escal, we likely don't have enough air to reach the farther of the two beacons, Din. The decision is made for us. We'll have a trail of lights as we go. There's still a chance someone could hear our escape pod's distress signal. This is horrible. And it explains why we didn't we don't recognize any of these names, because they didn't make it out. Emergency escape hatch. Those must be the lights. The lights that lead to the vessel. I need to get back to my ship and um yeah i'm going back to the ship and then what i'm gonna do is try to take my ship we might have to come back but i'm gonna try to take my ship to worst case scenario we just get eaten by another best case scenario we find the vessel so Taking this off again for my fellow anglerfish, but oh, before we go anywhere, one, let me repair my stuff. But two, escape pod three found. Escape pod three survivors. We have more strains here. All three know my. Okay, I'm sucking it up. I'm gonna do it. All three know my escape pods that crashed in our solar system. All three escape pods were launched from something called the vessel, which was badly damaged. The survivors from Escape Pod 3 detected two distinct beacons from the vessel, as if it was in two locations at once. The survivors from Escape Pod 3 abandoned the wreckage and attempted to return to the vessel. The survivors decided to follow the closer of the two vessel beacons due to their limited air supply. They planned to leave a trail of lights behind them in case somebody heard the distress call. We have to find the survivors. I probably should go by foot. Okay, so far we haven't been attacked. So, ow. Well, so far we haven't made a lot of noise, but what we're gonna do is go like this and then just don't do anything. Maybe the bramble is like scaring off the anglers. Take it slow. This was the path they took. Anglers. We have to be weary. You must have to be safe here. Because there's no way for you to go through here without... Rotating and stuff. There. We saw this before. I was trying to figure out what this was. We're closer to the red light than ever. Hmm. Those are no my bodies, just floating by it. Oh 
Oh my gosh. Oh, my nose. Just slowly glide, slowly glide. Oh gosh. They ran out of oxygen, I'm assuming. I'm gonna have to go out to find out. I can't use my translator tool from behind here. Oh, I don't wanna do this. For the Nomai. All right. There. To any who come here searching for us, we followed one of the two beacons from the vessel to this place, but now can't go any further. It's almost too faint to hear now, but the vessel's beacon is still faintly emitting from within this thorny seed. Yet the opening is too small for even a single Nomai to fit through it, so our escape pod couldn't have flown through here. I don't understand how this could be possible, but this gruesome place seems to be able to manipulate space itself. Maybe this was our undoing. To be so close to the location of the vessel and still so far away is difficult. Worse, the vessel's beacon is dying. Soon, we will be unable to hear it. There is nothing we can do now but try to perhaps find a way inside, or at least attempt to comprehend why this happened. My dearest hope is that the other escape pods were able to reach relative safety. There's only one thing to do, so... We need to get him back. I need to get closer. We have to launch into this. There. Okay, we need to get back. We have to follow the second, the longer sequence. 2.2 kilometers. Is it still moving? Error. Well, that's... Wait. It is the red. So now we know it's the red. We gotta get past this thorny mess. Then we're gonna have to pick up speed. No, an angler is so gonna... Okay, why did I do this? Okay, I'm literally a sitting duck for any anglers. And now I'm defiling the my bodies. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? Okay, we gotta go this way. <laughs> okay. So I can't fit through there? Really? I really thought I was going to be able to fit through there. Okay, we're going down. And then this is what we're going to have to do. I have to get into position and I'm going to have to build up speed and go. Let's pray that there's no anglers. And glide. Yeah. Vessel? I don't see anything. I think this is a fool's errand to go this way. Wait for it to load and hope that there's not an angler right as we enter. Loading. There's an angler right here. He's gonna get alerted. There's too many. Yep. Now, I can back out for a second. Okay, I can back out for a second. And then I can try to go back in, I think. Yes. So that, if we get an undesirable... I don't even, I don't, I don't even know. I, um, I would say go for the further one. I would say we continue to just shoot for the further one. Build up some speed and glide. Shoot. Oh gosh. That's pretty far away, guys. 
I think I'm gonna hit this. That's like super far away. That's an angler down below. That's an angler. Just go. I'm not gonna be able to be right on this pot for it, but it'll get me closer. You can hear him breathing. I know I'm moving so slow. But he's right there. It sounds like this, like... I don't know, the breathing is unnerving. Is that my breathing or his breathing? <laughs> Alright, the nest is right there. I can probably try to make... I'm gonna have to turn. He might have just so been awoken. Is that the vessel? You can make the slightest of turns, basically. Is that my breathing? I think that's my breathing. Or he's right on my tail. Guys, we need to go. I need to be line for it. Be line for it. No, he's awake. 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 Go in. Go in. Go in. Go in. Go in. Go in. so many angler deaths. I will bring you guys back when I get there, okay? <laughs> I will see you guys on the flip side. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I tried making it look like it hasn't taken me days and days to get this done. But there's no denying I can try to wear the same shirt, but my hair is different. Everything's different. This is the curse of dark bramble for me, guys. Like, I don't please let me know down below. Was dark bramble this difficult for you guys? Maybe it is just me at the end of the day. It's Maggieisms. I don't know. I got to I let's just be like, I want to be fully transparent here. I got to the vessel. Finally, I think maybe even you guys saw a piece of that. I got to the vessel and my computer, <laughs> my computer stopped picking up my audio after I read a couple of, of the things on the wall. Like I didn't get too far into the vessel, but I read the two conversation pieces. There was no audio over it and I had to restart my computer to get my audio back on track, which in turn kicked me back in the day because obviously if I restart my computer where I'm out of the game, disappears so after all that pain and misery of finally getting there i have to trek back so i stepped away from the computer i was like all right i'm coming at this a different day i'm not frustrated with the game i'm not frustrated with anything other than just my own just my own little things like from the computer messing up or from me not being able to keep my cool around these dang angler fishes and everything so yeah. Anyways, all right, let's get a fast forward and I will see you guys when we get to the vessel.
Okay, guys, we have successfully done it. We are back at the vessel. It just took everything in me not to cry when I went past the anglers. Mm. I think you do start to get used to it, so it's not nearly as difficult the next time you come around. Um, and I just want to re-remind you guys, I know I said it at the beginning of this clip, but as a reminder, guys, also maybe we should go into that piece. I didn't even think to go over there. Um, real quick, as a reminder, I have been here before. I think we even included a little bit of that footage, but again, I lost my mic. And so I'm gonna go back through and reread some of the stuff. I only read two things on walls. So you'll see the parts that I have already done. The music. I don't think there's anglers in this vicinity, so I'm just gonna kind of speed up. I know that's presumptuous, but still. Before I get bit right at the end. Yeah, so I had come in here and I saw all of these, all of the dead. It's horrid. Okay, so we're gonna kind of, kind of like position ourselves to be up in here with my ship. Match velocity right here. I don't want my, I just don't want my ship to fly away too, too far. All right. Let's do it. So many. This is an entirely different uh, core as well. It's almost like sand filled. It looks completely different. So happy to say I finally figured out the roll. Okay, so I'm just gonna go down here with you guys, but I think I did learn that there wasn't anything down here or that it's blocked by, uh, oh, oh, <laughs> it's blocked, I think, by, we need some electricity to come back to it to maybe open those doors or something. So we're gonna zoom back in here. And I'm making sure my mic is on. Right? So this is where we got to, but there are, things up here that I read. So I want to reread these with you guys. Mm. Oh, wow. I forgot that it doesn't show you what you've already seen. That's so weird. This is a skull's vessel. Something went badly wrong during our warp and our vessel is mortally wounded. We need help as quickly as possible. Our vessel appears to have, has it fused with the local environment somehow? There are vines that are now a part of the vessel. It's been torn apart from the inside itself, just like Feldspar's anglerfish, I think, when he got uh, wrapped up inside of it and then the seed basically like grew, or I think he had swallowed a seed and then it grew out. I think his was a little bit different. We were abandoning our vessel. Any Nomai clans or spaceflight capable species receiving this message, I implore you, we need your help. It is horrifying seeing like their, I mean, let this sink in for a second, but this is their last comms asking for anything out there. Is this broken? Can anyone hear me? Our vessel is dying. We need immediate assistance. And that is the last message from the Escal's vessel. Escal's is the clan, I believe. And then there was a whole separate writing over here, right? This is Kanna. To any know my clans whose vessels can hear this message. It's clear the universe is dying. There are fewer and fewer resources and safe places within space now. So my clan and I believe the best option is for all of our clans to stay together. I don't recognize these names, Kanna? If you reach the glooming galaxy, gloomy, 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 we've found the black rock suns are fairly stable and life in the star system is mm, comparatively thriving. We live in relatively safe environment or we live in safety. If you prefer to continue exploring alone, know you will be on your own. Dang. Kana, we're making our way to you. Bromi, I don't recognize Bromi's name either. It's good to hear you, Bromi. We'll watch for your vessel. Has anyone heard from Neem? 
His clan was its on its way to our vessel, but they never arrived, and he hasn't sent any messages. I'm beginning to worry. Me. That is unsettling. It reminds me of the old myth my grandfather used to tell. The disappearance of a skull. The Ascal clan, our clan, the clan in the solar system. I remember hearing the story as a child. Clem. One day, Ascal's vessel simply stopped responding. The other clans searched and searched, but found no trace. It was as if their missing friends had warped out of existence. Hysop? Reminds me of Aesop. That's no myth, friends. Ascal's clan existed, and their story was real. This is... this makes it sound like it was a long time ago. What a curious event to have passed into myth. Our ancestors' ancestors were told that story when they were young. Ancestors' ancestors. So, these are new Nomai. These are a different clan and entirely newer generation of Nomai for this, like, a skull's existence to have been passed into myth. I think I have to keep mentally reminding myself this because I often, I guess I, because you're in the present and you're exploring all of this, even though you're seeing the annihilation of a species, right? And all of these escape pods with death and we continue to see body after body. Still, as I'm going through the game, it doesn't feel like they were that far off from us. Like it doesn't feel like there were so many generations back. And this is, you know, like this is completely a different time. I guess it's just, there's moments that remind you of how long ago these Nomai were lost and how much has changed. It was very long ago, but yes, my clan's ancestors searched for Ascal's clan for a long time, but in the end, none of them were ever seen again. It's the only time in our history a vessel has even disappeared this way. Hysop, I hope you weren't comparing Ascal's story to my clan's vessel. Neem, oh no. Neem, my friend, we feared you were gone. Oh, Neem comes, okay, Neem chimes back in. Okay, this is kind of cool. So, well, I mean, it's interesting. It gives you a lot of context to the Know My Culture, but you've got these new people, <clears throat> Can or whatever, and Clem and all of them, and they're talking about how has anybody seen Neem? They're traveling to different systems because their, starts to, or their solar system is dying out, I guess. It was unstable. Who can hear me? Hold on. It's clear the universe is dying. All right, the universe is dying. There are fewer and fewer resources, safe places from within space now. So my clan and I believe the best option is for all of our clans to stay together. But if the universe is dying out as a whole, it's only a time before it comes to over here, right? If you can reach Gloaming Galaxy. So maybe, just maybe we can take our own people to Gloaming Galaxy if it's even possible to traverse into a different place. But anyway, so Neem chimes back in after them wondering where he went and is like, wait a minute. <laughs> we feared you were gone. And then we have this one. Not yet we aren't, but nearly. We found trouble during our warp. The triple suns of the bright spark star system exploded. And it was only a lucky coincidence we weren't caught in the blast. We'll meet you soon, Kana. Kana. I'm relieved your clan is safe, Neem. It's good to hear your words. Any vessels nearby, remember to be extremely cautious of potentially unstable stars, which is most of them by now. Wow. So on one side, we have the Ascal's last calls, Felix. And on the other side, we have the newer Nomai. Okay, so we come down here. This is so grand as well. I mean, if you think about this, this is beautiful. What in the world? Velocity matched. This guy was dying near this. Warp core. <gasps> Insert warp core. The the things from um where were the warp cores? Okay, I didn't see. Yeah, so everything those were the two things I read when I first got here. So everything else is new. Okay, wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> Man, morning voice is real right now. The warp cores were in the high energy lab, right? Oh gosh, no, my body. 
You can place the warp core back. Would it bring the ship, would it take the entire ship back? Somewhere else, right? What does this do? Oh, I would assume that it powers up the warp core. This is the power to the warp core. Okay. Huh. The warp core, look at this. Look at the stairs. Oh, there's more down here. Hold on. There's something else. The eye of the universe. Oh my gosh. They must, yeah. The coordinates to the eye of the universe, no? If we could take the vessel there, we could make it, right? I'm recording now. I've never encountered anything like this. The signal the vessel is receiving appears to be older than the universe itself. This is our first contact with anything of this nature. Everyone, prepare to warp immediately. Eskal, wait! I need more time to send an outgoing message. So Eskal is a person. Oh no, shouldn't we tell another clan where we're going? We can send the message upon our arrival. Extraordinary signal appears to be sudden and disappeared quickly and we can't lose our discovery. I understand. The vessel is ready to warp on the signal's approximate coordinates. The warp core is powered, but this will be a significant jump. Afterwards, we'll need time to recharge the core. That shouldn't create a problem provided we arrive near or at the signal source. Everyone be ready to warp. Oh no. Yes, we need warp core stuff, but how? Um. Oh no, it's happening. It's happening! It takes a long time to traverse through the dark bramble that that is like the only time. I guess, yeah, that was 22 minutes. <clears throat> yeah, because it took me about 15 minutes to get to the vessel itself. But I think we did read everything. I think we got everything. I know I kind of rushed that and I don't like to do that at all, but I did not want to have to come back and learn a little bit more knowledge. So even at a minimum, Even at a minimum, I just wanted to be able to see it in our log on the ship itself. So this is good. This is good. This is good. Okay. Uh, I think that was pretty much everything, although it might tell us that there's more to learn there. But the warp core, the warp core itself. All right, let's recap with the ship's log. Yeah. That is the last thing. View entry. That's it. That's it. We have all of the pieces now. So what's left? I found the derelict Nomai vessel deep within Dark Bramble. The vessel's warp core is long dead. I activated a three-sided pillar on the vessel's bridge that appears to be some sort of input device. Yeah. The Nomai tried to call for help, but the vessel's outgoing message bro system broke during the crash. The vessel can still hear incoming messages from other Nomai vessels. The remaining Nomai clans are regrouping in response to the impending death of the universe. I found a recording of an original signal the Nomai encountered from the Eye of the Universe. The Nomai were worried the signal might disappear, so they warped before they could tell another clan where they were going. I see. Okay. Well, that's everything we have. That's it. That's it. Huh. Yeah, so basically what we were seeing was they were worried the signal might disappear, so they warped before they could tell another clan where they were going. Um. <laughs> That's it. But what does that really mean? I couldn't warp them out of that. They already crashed. So even if you had warp cores... I don't, that's everything to explore. Well, I do know that the Ashwin project, right, we can turn off the Ashwin. There is an advanced warp core inside the protective casing of the center of the planet. Removing the core will disable the Ashwin project. Okay. <coughs> well, at this point then, we remove the core. 
we remove the core and we place it in the vessel because we have the coordinates as well. Or the coordinates were already in there, so maybe it didn't even matter if you had this? Oh, I don't know. If we remove... Okay, wait, if we remove the Ash Twin project, would we get extra time? Because that would be my biggest concern. We have the advanced warp core inside the protective casing. That is complete. So that's what we need to receive, but then we would have to go all the way back to the vessel once again, and then we'd have to power it up and launch us? That just seems impossible within the time that it would need to take. I mean, you guys saw how little time I had, but I guess we can try it. Ash Twin Project, you do get to the Ash Twins fairly quickly. Like, within the cycle of the day. Maybe? I mean, I think it's like my only lead. We have the Quantum Moon. We figured out all the Quantum Moon stuff. We saw the Nomai itself. Orbital Probe Cannon. Maybe there is something still that you have to use with it? Hmm. The rock, right? We saw this. The lake bed cave. The quantum grove. The tower of knowledge. Yeah. Solanum. Visitors arrive to make the rest of the journey on foot. Gravity cannon. All right. Well, I think our best bet is to grab the warp core here and try to take it back to the vessel. But if it's already wrapped up in the bramble, how is it... Is that even possible? I also feel like as soon as I remove this warp core, we're not going to be in a continual cycle for the day, and I'm going to have, like, one shot to make this work. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I feel like I've got one shot. <sighs> All right. Before we get ready for this, let me run to the bathroom because I feel like this is going to be intense and I'm going to be zooming from place to place and everything. So I hope that this is right. I really do. <laughs> I put so much time and energy into this playthrough. It just would be really, I don't know if there's multiple endings to begin with, but I'm really hoping I don't get a bad ending. I just, I've invested so much time into this. Okay, I will be right back and then we will see what happens when we remove the warp core. The most concerning part about all of this, and I just want to make sure everything's good. I want to make sure everything... I have to waste a little bit of time anyway, but... Yeah, I've officially explored everything. Um... The worst part about all of this is I have to go back through Dark Bramble. And knowing that I'm carrying the warp core, make it successfully to the same spots in the correct amount of time. I don't know about that. I think I'm gonna have to do, now that I've been there once, oh man. Now that I've been there once, I'm just trying to think if this even is the fastest way. I think I'm gonna have to go to the beacon again. I'm just gonna have to do the beacon path. But it's a little bit sad because you miss, like, there's time here. No, because then you'd have to get out and everything. I was wondering if you go to Dark Bramble first, you find a faster path to, to the vessel. I didn't think about how that was what we were going to have to do. I'm, like, very cognizant that this is probably one of our last moments. And it's just a little sad. I, I, there's probably a large reason additionally why I've been postponing getting through Dark Bramble. I mean, fear aside, yes, but I hate finishing games. I really do because I just don't want the magic to be over. I never do. Um, yeah. So we're gonna have to wait for this to show itself. This just seems like a bit of a waste of time. With Dark Bramble right there, we could easily try to get to it, launch our scout, leave our scout there, and get back. Come over here, pick it up, and then go back. That's a lot of back and forth though. 
think it really is as simple as just waiting this one out. I guess we could listen to our sounds again. I'm gonna go outside. Use my signal scopes. Okay, we're at... Uh, mm, no, no, we're in a good spot. So we had Ryback somewhere far, far out there. Hold on, is this one Ryback? That's Chert. Yes, Chert's right there. Wait, before we do this, oh no, the people in my home won't know. Gabra's out there. I was just thinking, I was like, oh man, we should go talk to the people at my home. But they wouldn't know. Gabro on Ocean's Deep. Oh. Yes, Feldspar. I like Feldspars. Then we had, who else? Hmm. Gabros. There's one that I'm missing. Adelrock? Look at my little body. <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna have fun with this. I don't think this is gonna work successfully because I think I will have wasted too much time. Like too much time will have passed and I'm not gonna be able to bring the core back, but whatever. Whee! Oh, there we go. Rybex. Down, 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 down. Such a beautiful game across the board. I know that whenever we get to the end, I'm probably going to have more questions than answers. And I haven't been great at like predictive analysis with this one, but I've just enjoyed every single step of it. And it's not over yet. I know I need to not. I, I'm preemptively celebrating as if, but there's nothing else to do. So this is kind of like, I'm already just envisioning that this is going to be the ending. I'm mentally preparing myself. I'm gearing myself up for it. We have the DLC as well. So it is important to remember we have the DLC. You guys, um, I'm going to finish Leon's part two playthrough, Leon's hardcore playthrough on Resident Evil first, which should take a couple of episodes, like five or six. And then I'll start back pretty quickly with uh, the DLC, I think. But everything's getting put on hold when Final Fantasy VII comes out. I love I love all these games, but Final Fantasy VII has been my like most anticipated game that I think I've had in years. I honestly can't remember the last time I've been so excited for a game. Uh, we probably should have our ship pretty close, but I actually want it to be... I want it to be pretty far away from that, so I'm gonna leave it where it's at, and we're gonna go ahead and start. I saw it. There. Could I have gone yet? No. That was... okay. Dang, I could have tra traveled right there. I'm... oh no, I can't. I can't, I can't. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Alright, let me put this away. Just kind of mess around here for a little bit. What's over here? It will take another, uh, cycle or two, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it could be this one. I'm hoping it's this one because we need to save all the time we can. Right, so we're hopping in it right after it passes through. Yes, we'll be able to do it this cycle. Good, good, good. We gotta save all the time. Ooh. I'm wondering what the DLC could possibly be about. I think the title was eye of the storm no something eye so maybe we get to the eye and then the dlc is maybe meeting some of the other living nomai possibly but this is good this means if there's a dlc that means that we should still be alive mm -hmm. we <laughs> our whole what if the rest of my people die out but i take the vessel to the eye and then in turn i survive and all right, this is why I don't need to predict anything. Now I'm just getting wild with it. Come on. The sands of time. This was my biggest challenge. It's only fitting that we start our last day in this location because you guys know this spot was the bane of my existence. This is the correct one. I this this is where like I felt like my playthrough was pretty smooth. Oh, 3 minutes of oxygen. I really felt like my playthrough was smooth up until I got to the twins. I am looking forward to seeing the correct path as well after. All right, here we go. 
Buckle up. We're getting that warp core. We're gonna have like 15 minutes to take it. Wait, the warp core is causing the 22 minute intervals, so we should be fine. I think we'll have extra time. We should have extra time. I think that was the whole notion of Oh, that was really, really scary. Okay, that was really lucky too. I thought that we were about to, um, we're about to lose it. All right, no, my, I never did figure out what, why some were specifically lit up and others weren't, but here we go. The horn calling. Anti-gravity control. Wait for it. Bring this guy in. Here we go. Opening the core up. Oh, I gotta take it with me. Hold on. Core open. Anti-gravity in effect. Oh my gosh. I'm glad I didn't pick this up the other day. I thought this was gonna end the whole thing, but... Well, I guess in a way it kind of did, didn't it? Where's the platform? I need to get back to my entrance. All right. What changes by having this? You know what I mean? Like something had to have changed. The Nomai's body is there. Maybe the, uh, the, like, there's certain know my bodies that are also kind of leading us where we need to go, right? The noise, the noise. The music's changed. Let's go. Alright, make sure we're away from the sun. Dark Bramble. We need Dark Bramble. There. I just hope I can get through this. Avoid it, avoid it, avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. Okay. <laughs> this gives us about 12 minutes to traverse through and get to the vessel and place this in. Give or take a little bit. Otherwise our day starts completely over or do you fail? If you don't get it there in time, maybe you just lose. Cause we've already taken out the core. Match velocity. Okay, what are you doing? I should have kept my autopilot going. All right, go down here. The music! Okay. Would it not just be faster to go for the red? Because we know from the red, yeah, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't know exactly which one. You'd have to be able to tell exactly I need the distress beacon. Okay, that's it. We're gonna have to roll with the uh, distress beacon this whole time. I've gotta make this fast too. I've got precious cargo, don't mess this up. I think we can get through in about five minutes. I'm looking at it, it's like 11. Depending on how... How fast we roll through this. I'm gonna have to take some risks too. Like when we get close to the eggs or to the pods, trying to like... It's disappeared. There it is. Okay. First one. This is the only way. I wonder if there is another way to get to the vessel. Like maybe if you know what you're doing, it's easier. At this point, I could try to push for it, but I'm just gonna be a little safer. Just a little bit safer. There we go. Are you getting close? 
Okay. I know that was kind of risky. I know, I know. Not ideal. Okay, look for the signal again. It should be down here. No. There's that big thing floating around that was not floating before. Or maybe it always has been floating and I've been... Messing it up this whole time. There. All right, the signal is... There. Look at that big floating thing. What in the world? It's a quantum piece? It must be pieces of quantum moon or something. Keeps blocking my path. Oh no. I had to be super cautious. I don't know where the distress beacon is now. This really threw me off. What the hell? I'm gonna get caught. That was so unlucky. What is this hurling thing? And now I've landed on it. My signal is completely gone. There's no... Uh, it's down there. What the hell? Okay. There's an angler right there. What is this? I don't remember this being here before. Escape pod three. It's that way. Down. Down. There's so much more. There's more pieces. Escape pod three, it should be at the end of that. I don't think we have to go through another nest, but I'm just gonna slowly do it. But that just ate like two or three minutes of our time. Oh, unlucked. <laughs> Trying to speed it up a little. Five hundred meters away. Inching. Inching. Once we start getting close to twenty minutes, that's when I'm gonna get terrified. I'm probably freaking out for no reason. There's just a lot on the line right now. So much at stake. Come on. Okay, here we go. So, speeding up a little bit and then we're gonna match velocity and we'll rotate and figure out where we need to go from here. This is good. All right. Look for the lights. The lights should be over here. So we're putting this away. Yep, lights are down here. Now we slowly traverse it. Oh, <laughs> we're coming in at 15 minutes since I started like everything back up, period. So we just need to make it through to the red. I love the music that they've overlaid during this last part. I think as long as you have the thing, it does this kind of music. I don't remember this being here before. Okay. So we're coming in. Okay. Bramble seed. Uh, equip scout. There we go. All right. There's a massive thing in front of us. All right, I liked going from this direction. I know it's a little bit harder for our ship to make it through, but yeah, what is that? And why is it completely, oh gosh, there we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That thing is gonna be blocking my whole direction. Oh, snap. What the hell is that? Okay, I'm inching towards it. What the hell? Is this supposed to be helping us? Is it aiding us? <laughs> is it aiding us? I'm going through too slow.
We just have to get to the red. In Sheen. Okay. 17 minutes since I started this video. Is this because I pulled out the warp cord? No, this stuff was here before. But I don't think I ever saw it like the first times I was doing this. Okay. We're gonna beeline for it here soon. Try to get up some momentum to launch us to the red. You know what I mean. Or maybe I wonder if, no, the anglers would still mess with you. Like there's no way that the anglers don't mess with you. All right, go. Launch, don't make a single sound. We're gonna hit his mouth. Same strategy, go for red. Go for red. Red eggs, rotate from there. Make it to the scout. We're coming in at 19 minutes. 19 minutes. It's gonna take me at least two more minutes to get to it. I mean, I can try to speed up a little bit, but I don't trust this area. I don't think it's worth it. It's not worth losing everything. Because even if we get there right at the last second, if we put it in, we can, we can launch. We can do this. We can do this. Plus, I think my whole strategy of using the eggs to our advantage to like rotate and then launch helps out a lot. <laughs> Except that there's an angler hanging out really close to the eggs, so he might be alerted. I don't think we normally have one right there. Let's uh go down a little. Okay. Hopefully there's nothing in the way. I'm gonna slowly inch up. The eggs almost look different too. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me, really? There's a whole thing right there. There's a whole bramble. Okay, that is in fact an angler. Okay, we're in the eggs. All right, you guys ready? We're almost there. Come up through the eggs. Okay, we just need to go up and over that bramble. No. We're so close. Don't do this to me. I'm gonna have to pull down and rush through in three, two, one, go. He's gonna get alerted. Go! Okay. Ah! It was so intense! Okay, hopefully nothing's in here. I never even thought about there being an angle in here because it's so brambly. All right, 21 minutes, 21 minutes on my timer. 21 minutes since the day started. Come on. Okay. Launch it, launch it. Hold on, match velocity. Here we go. Velocity matched. Go. Oh my goodness, I'm getting like absolute shakes right now. Let's go. I'm here. Oh no! Insert core. Okay, let's get power going. Look, the trees, look, everything's coming back. Let's get the power over to it. Wait, actually, real quick, do we have any time? I don't know if I have any spare time, but does this not open the doors over there? Okay, it doesn't even matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Okay. Do I have the coordinates plugged in? Wait, are those the right coordinates? Is that changing the eye coordinates? I have the eye coordinates. Wait. Is it showing different things? Okay, hold on. This is a specific eye coordinate. 
That's not different. How do I get it to launch? Wait, how do I know? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to lose this. Okay, wait, wait. I have to make the symbols. I'm assuming you have to make the symbol. Okay. Okay. On each corner, you have to make the right symbol. Resume. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Okay, so we need to start on the very first one, because this is the last one, right? Okay, so we can do it from here. We can do it from here. So we are trying to make this symbol. Then we need to go across to here. No. No. Reset, reset, reset. 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 Hold on, let me remove the power real quick. Because maybe it will not keep. Maybe this will reset it. Oh my gosh, I'm my own worst enemy. Okay, maybe that resets, I don't know. I don't... All right, let me try to just calm down. Shoot. How do you just reset it? Oh, if you go back over it, it resets. Okay. So, we need to go here. Reset the whole thing. There. Okay, so we start here. We're going here, the here, to here, to over here, to here, to here. Okay. That did not keep, by the way. Did not keep. Okay, this is the first symbol, so let's just start with this. It's this guy to this guy to here. How do you make sure that it's good? You have to slowly bring it down. Okay. Don't panic. So we're gonna go here to crisscross here to here to crisscross here and slowly bring him down and over. Okay. Let me reset this guy. All right, and back at the end. But you can't. Oh, we gotta go the opposite way. No. 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 I didn't do it. It's coming. I didn't get it? I don't understand. Oh my last second. Oh. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> unknown. There's an unknown out there. <laughs> what? I must be at the eye. This is all the same. Okay. I, um... go up here. Now that I'm here, what do I do? Hearing my footsteps sound so heavy is just weird. The vessel's been moved. But this is just the reading. That's the same same. Um. I guess I can still move the marble around, so maybe it's something to do with that. No. That's an unknown. Does it want me to jump towards it? Because I'm not about to jump toward that. No, there's no way. I don't think I do want to go back, though. I don't think I want to go back.
Yeah, I can't go over there. So that's it. That's the eye. That's... Weird substance around it. What were they hoping to achieve by going to the eye? Like, what? Well, this really doesn't do anything, does it? I can't break through that. I've got a bunch of oxygen here. That, I'm assuming, will just send me back, no? But it's kind of our only option. So I think I do need to rotate it, even if it sends me to... Restarting the day? I'm afraid I have to. I don't really think there's another choice. And the eye's right there and there's an unknown signal, but I, I can't get over there. There is something else out there. There's a lot of something else is out there. There's almost other stars or something. I'm gonna listen to it for a second. It's actually really ominous and I don't like it at all. Mm -mm. No. Let me finish reading this because we know, I know we rushed. What's that noise? It almost sounds like something's ending right now. I'm recording now. I've never encountered anything like this. The signal from the vessel received to be older than the universe itself. This is the first contact with anything of this nature. Eskal, wait, I need to send an outgoing message. Shouldn't I tell other clans where we're going? We can send the message upon our arrival. This extraordinary signal appeared suddenly. It may disappear just as quickly. We can't lose a discovery this incredible. Focus on preparing for the warp instead. I understand. Anona, is the vessel ready to warp to the signal's approximate coordinates? The warp core is powered, but this will need a significant jump. Afterwards, we'll need time to recharge the core. That shouldn't create a problem, provided we arrive at or near the signal source. Everyone ready to warp. And that's it. That's it. Okay, well, I'm gonna jump back through and we're probably gonna get zapped. We're, oh, okay. I need to stop being so like fearful. <laughs> I was so scared that it was just gonna send us back to where we were. The quantum moon is here. This is the sixth location, right? Yeah, if the quantum moon is here, there is another signal though. There is another signal. Our vessel is officially jumped here. I know there was another signal. It wasn't just the quantum moon. We need to go to the other, we need to traverse to the other side of the pole. There is something out there. Quantum moon's over there. I guess this is it. Yeah, it's on the other side. Yeah, you can see it. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. The eye of the storm. Wow. Is this the quest for infinite knowledge? We're getting close. We're gonna have to enter into it. What the heck are we gonna see? It's complete and utter darkness. Trees. Tr everything, everything. Everything's spawning. It's so much quantum energy. 
Look at it. Sometimes trees, sometimes that. Oh my gosh. We need to make sure we're headed for the same, the right direction. Wait, I lost it. I lost the signal. There. Roughly over there. Whoa. We're almost at the South Pole. Or no, we always spawn on the South Pole, don't we? That's it. Unknown. That's what we saw, right? When we went to the sixth location. We kind of saw something similar, but then it sent me somewhere else. Really? You really want me to go in that? Oh my gosh, because nothing ever good happened from diving into a quantum hole. I can't even, I couldn't even like, oh no, now I'm stuck. Oh no, oh no, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, maybe we need to get up on, this is like almost a crater of some sort. Oh, perspective, of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, I guess at this point, we really only have one way to go. All right, guys. Feel like Dorothy all of a sudden. I don't like this at all. I don't like this. I don't like this. The Nova I never got to see it for themselves, but thanks to their efforts and technology, a Harthian was able to reach the eye of the universe. Feldspar, Goss, and Insulate, and Hornfell. The radio tower on Timberhearth was built for transmission to space satellites. Hornfeld noticed a curious anomaly, but it went, it ultimately went unexplained. Okay, that's the main difference. A Harthian was able to reach it. Maybe we go to the quantum, um... At the end of its lifespan, our sun collapsed under its own gravity and then exploded in a violent supernova. Okay. Yep, that is what happened. That's the supernova every time. I don't think I've ever... Look, the anglerfish is dead now, too. Of all the life forms who will perish in the oncoming death of the universe, we will miss the anglerfish the least. Yes. Can confirm. Can confirm. The Nomai who came to our solar system were following a signal from the eye of the universe. They perished when the interloper arrived, bringing with it the deadly substance we called ghost matter that flooded the entire solar system almost instantly without warning. We had gotten to that. So yeah, I had figured that much out. Once we got to the interloper and we read about that, we did know that. I love how they are ending it this is why it is so important to take your time in every aspect of a game. I didn't know when I first started and was looking at the museum, I didn't realize that that information would be so important to see again. Okay, so we need to go upstairs, I think. There's no signals out here. We saw that. We saw the anglerfish. We should be able to go upstairs, right? I think I'm headed upstairs and I don't even realize. There we go. They don't make that easy for you? All right, before we observe that, actually, I think that might be most, no. 
Ornfeld's observations. At first, the point of the light in this image were stars, but they were galaxies. And this image covers just a tiny patch of the whole sky, which means the universe contains at least a thousand times more galaxies than previously imagined. I think I need to sit down. I do remember that from the beginning. This is odd. According to my redshift calculations, every single galaxy in this image is moving away from us. In fact, the further away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away. It's almost as if the entire universe is expanding. But if that's true, was everything closer together in the past, and how far back can we extra extrapolate? Did the universe have a beginning? Okay. Roll. What? The crickets. Those are trees. The grove. This is the grove from my home. I th no, this. I'm so tiny. What? Oh. They're moving away. Oh. There, there's blue ones too. Sun's exploding and look, the solar system is disappearing all of the different solar systems that are being completely wiped out by all of the supernova is wiping out the universe as we know it in every single galaxy That's it. I guess we can attach to it. Unidentified signal nearby. That's myself! What the hell? The trees are getting smaller. Then a fire? Light campfire. What? Get a nice roasty marshmallow. Well, now it won't keep disappearing on us because we have light on it. Unable to pinpoint location. There's no other signals. Oh my gosh. It's unnerving. Esker, Adelrock? Do you hear music? No. Yes. No, my. No, my structure. What? There's no entrance. There's no entrance. Oh. 
That, the banjo. But I can't get to it. Wait, maybe if I turn and come back? No. I see you. But, oh, the crack, oh, silly me. Wait, I don't think this crack was always here because I just landed on the top. I did. I had landed on the top and there wasn't anything there. Look away and look back. More of it's collapsing. Okay, I can break into it now. Or no, I can't, I still can't. I need one more. It's broken down a little bit more. Look away. There. I guess I just need to turn the light on and off instead of look away. The music. That's more of our people. Aren't you forgetting someone? Yeah, yeah, how rude, Ryback. Um, it's uh, it's not quite time yet. I'm pretty sure we'll need the others for this next part. We'll need, you know, everyone. No rush, take your time. It might not even exist here. Music, more music. There's... What is this? The quiet shade. There. Does it keep traveling? Across old bark. That's one of our other, um... Oh, snap! Oh, my... <laughs> Not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Uh, let's get back to the camp. Let's take the harmonica back. My, my stomach just dropped. But I brought the... Yes! Feldspar. Hatchling, you found me. Nice to have company around a campfire, isn't it? Go on and go get the others. I wouldn't want him to miss out. What a beautiful ending. Wait, I've lost it. I lost the signal. An ancient glade. It was just here. Well, let's go get this one. It's certainly traveling on me. I think what happens is if you look away, you'll lose it because once again, it's the quantum. Wait, but it's so far out there. Hold on, my nose, hold on. Oh my. Allergies. Okay, if it's out there, how am I supposed to snag that? Oh, okay, I see it. No, no, it's disappeared again. Some of these I don't even recognize. Keep the signal on it. No, my. Pointing up at something. No. Oh my goodness, are you serious? It's like a wild goose chase at this point. We saw this, and then that. Oh, right, when, when we see it. Yeah, it's showing us some of the things that we had learned. Let's go give it back to him. Chert, the stars were beautiful, weren't they? Even if our star is what ultimately killed us. I'll wait here and remember them while you gather everybody. How many more signals do we have? This is the know my signal. There's something in order to grab this. It's not the same thing. It's not, um, it's not gonna be a zoom in and grab it. It's gonna be like a, Oh, I didn't realize this signal was going to be all the way up there. Okay, so I need to say, oh, okay, buddy. Okay. Oh, 
You guys are trying to reach for the music. <laughs> Look. No way. This is so true with the Nomai. Um, I think what's really special about the Nomai as a culture is they always wanted to help each other. Like, they had such a sense of community. And that's so important. Like, I feel like community continues to dissolve, like, a little bit more and more, like, the importance of it. It's not getting closer. I feel like I went the wrong way. I think I preemptively ended it. I did it wrong. Wait, send me back. Send me back. Send me back. No! I wanted to collect all my friends. I didn't think about it. I meant to collect all my friends. Oh no. Okay, I'm not gonna beat myself up over it, but yeah, I think there was a little bit more music. I should have known that going towards the new signal was gonna take me somewhere else. I just got lost in the fun of collecting everything. No! No, that worked! That worked! Oh, thank goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, thank goodness. The Nomai! Solanum! Hypothesis. Everyone must be here before we can begin. Once they arrive, I believe we'll be ready for the next step. I'm glad you remembered me. Solanum, of course I remembered you. So let's see, any other signals? Pretty much just one signal, right? My little scout. He just happened to be, yeah. What would we be missing? Another... What? I'm technically getting closer to it. Wait, I think it's somebody up in the trees. Let me look at the... I think... Yeah, look! Something. Oh, it's the hammock! Yeah! <laughs> it's the hammock. Oh my goodness. Mm hmm. Get my scout back. Whoa! And our last founder. That's why they, yeah, Gavro. What do you say? Time, buddy. Ready to start the music? No, I'm getting, you can hear it in my voice. No. This should be cool. Gavro is starting it. Trying to see if the smoke is doing anything different. <laughs> all right, oh, we have to talk to each individual person. I was expecting them to all like strike it up. <laughs> what do you say then? Should I get out the old harmonica? <laughs> Here goes nothing. I can't wait to play with the whole group again. Can I start? So he was on Adel Rock and I think there was a lot of loneliness on Adel Rock because it was also mostly discovered at that point. But each of these individual people represent like a step forward in discovery and bravery and won't let you down. <laughs> His rocking chair. I love this. I love a harmonica, I really do. And then Chert. <laughs> Shall I begin? All of them ventured so far out. Well, then here I go. Rybeck. Rybeck with Brittle Hollow. I would not wish that. Yes. You got it. I'll do my best. So all of these sounds are familiar to us. None of this is new. 
These are what we heard the whole time. Everywhere we went, we had Gabro. Gabro was on Ocean's Deep, right? On the hammock, just chilling there through all of the chaos. All of these people were just hanging out through all the chaos. I think one of the people that I respect so much is Feldspar. He actually spoke about a lot of like profound things. I mean, especially his own comfort in isolation. I think that that's really hard for anybody. I think all of these people together, when you think about it, every single one of these people ventured out on their own. Very, I think also because they had such like a wonder and a desire to, for discovery, but also to advance their own kind and their own species and find new things. Esker, I feel like is like the grandpa, you know, from Addle Rock. Shirt. Mm -hmm. And then we had Rybeck. And last but not least, we had Solanum, who we found on the quantum moon. A conscious observer has entered the eye. I wonder what happens now. Is it time to find out? Yes. This song is new to me, but I am honored to be a part of it. <laughs> look, yes, look. All together, look what it's creating. Solanum signal. I'm crying, but I'm crying. Symbols. Leaves, I, I, so many different symbols. flashbanged right now. <laughs> the music there at the end. <sighs> Is that it? <laughs> oh man what a powerful game like i'm not even quite sure why i'm crying i just creative director i just want to game designer i want to see how many people took part in this art director wesley <laughs> I think I did see that you guys had mentioned, I've been trying not to look at the comments, but I saw you guys mention that it was started with like a student's project or something, like a group of students. That is not a lot of people to create all of this. What beautiful minds. 3D artists. <laughs> I'm not really, I'm not really sure what I feel right now. <laughs> That ending felt just right. Like I didn't know how it was gonna end, but circling around a campfire with every single person we found along the way. And honestly, it's really easy to go to all of those planets and be focused on your own task to the point that you don't even notice the people there, your predecessors, right? Like the people that have previously ventured where nobody else has gone before. But they are so vital to your story because they're your people. Mobius Digital Games. That's really not a lot of people to create such a 
like spectacular game. The sound composer sound effects, Andrew. I didn't even see, is this considered an indie? Mobius contractors. Sound designer. Vocalist. Elk. <laughs> wow. Business development. Anna, okay, Anna Purna, yeah. Interactive. Oh my goodness, you guys. I think this might be the first time that I've been borderline speechless at the end. And I can't quite pinpoint why. <laughs> Even the music right now. 3D artists, senior artists. Okay, it's a few more people than I was expecting. For some reason, I was thinking it was like 20, 27, 20 something people, but it looks like they contract a lot of people too. Unity developers, tricky fast. Um, I do this for a manner of reasons. One, because a lot of times I will talk about my thoughts during credits, but I think it is so important. I know, like, they're probably never going to see this or anything like that, but I think it's important for all of us to just stop and realize how many people go into making something that we might consume for 20 plus hours or less hours than that. But at the end of the day, that's hours or years of their lives that they took putting into this and bringing something that we could enjoy and love. So I always just want to pay respect, I feel like. I look at it as just paying respect to the people that brought such a beautiful story to life and the creative geniuses behind something like this. Backers. Man. music that was something that this game did so well was timing the music like the music at every single part only added to the story but at the same time there was void there was like times where you wouldn't have anything playing and it brought you into that moment and slowed you down and made you feel or be fearful if you think about one of the reasons why i was able to get through dark bramble a lot of other times was actually Echoes of the Eye. We got to do Echoes of the Eye. Uh, one of the big reasons I was able to get through those parts was when I pulled out my headphones um, because sound plays such a big factor into fear for me or any feeling and emotion. Even this right now, even the ending, like I started to get teary eyed at the very ending, not even because of what I was seeing as much as the sounds coming in and harmonizing together and um, yeah. Oh, I love when they do this too, when they when they say like, thank you mom and dad and thank people and just show gratitude across the board. Thank you for playing Outer Wilds. <laughs> I think I'm also just tearing up because it's another game that we completed. 14.3 <laughs> billion years later. What? What? An after credit scene. Hearth, Timber Hearth. Oh, look at that art style. <laughs> they look like almost like little crickets. They're still roasting marshmallows. <laughs> what a beautiful way to end it. <laughs> I think that's it. Gosh, I don't really even have words to describe what we just consumed. <laughs> I wish I did. My nose is now running and all. Um, I think it's just enough or suffice to say that words can't really do it justice. I'm also terrible. I'm so bad at describing what I'm thinking or feeling at the end of a game anyway. Um, I'm so bad with words. <laughs> So we do have Echoes of the Eye. So this also isn't our last look at it. We're gonna come back for DLC. I feel like I need to sit on my feelings for a little bit. And I think this is gonna be one of those games that I'm gonna keep thinking of little things 
as I continue on and play other games and be reminded of parts of it or trying to figure out the whole meaning behind it. I, I definitely would love for you guys to drop any additional knowledge bombs or any ideas or thoughts or your own personal um, predictions on what was going on here and really what what is the precipice of the game. I know for me, I really took away the wonder and just perspective that we had as being this species, exploring another, like going out and trying to explore beyond just us and trying to broaden our horizons, whether it's for knowledge or advancement, like technological advancement or anything, but getting to see another species through our eyes was really cool. I think it was also, I, I talked about it through my whole playthrough, but I loved how they brought to life the culture just through words alone they brought out the humor the relatability and showed us that well i think a big part was the community side of it like the nomai i talked about it just like an hour ago but the nomai are such a people of community and they worked together and look at what they were able to achieve like after the vessel crashed and they had three beacons and granted one beacon was lost and that was horrid the other two beacons distress beacons they landed and they were able to even though they were completely on opposite sides come together still to create something to which they thought would help and save or find this eye of the universe um so i just i really liked the emphasis on what you can do when multiple minds come together I think especially right now, I think if I'm taking it to like a larger perspective, it's really easy despite all the connectivity that we have and the technology at our hands, it's really easy to feel isolated and to feel lonely. And I love that ending scene because it's our character coming back together with all of the people from our own species, from our own um, world timber hearth right and coming together and look at what they were able to achieve you know and that was the significance of them bringing forth the eye of the universe and so yeah that was my biggest takeaway was just coming together and so uh that kind of like it takes a village you know it's a very sweet perspective i know there's so many other things i could dive into with this game but i'm just kind of in post completion haze or paralysis where i'm just trying to digest what I experienced. I think across the board, the biggest thing that stands out to me with this game is its uniqueness. Like I, I really haven't played anything that felt similar to this. And I think it's really hard to create new ideas or new things and they did this. I mean, yeah, you could pick apart and find elements that we see in other games or things like that, but this is the first game I've played in a long time for the first time that I wasn't like, oh, this reminds me of this, or this reminds me of that, or this reminds me of this. I didn't compare it to anything else. Like, I just took it for as it was because it felt so original. And I think that it's so important to live original and to create originality and to let I don't know, share the story that you want to share. It is interesting with how many people played a big part in this. I want to know what prompted or what made them think of creating something like this. So I know I could dive into so many more things and I'm already rambling. My voice is wavering because I'm just emotional <laughs> for who knows why. Um, but not only a massive thanks to the devs for creating just a beautiful game, but I just want to thank you guys for watching and interacting and commenting and bringing forth so many incredible ideas. Um, when I do a first playthrough, it's never going to be a perfect playthrough. That's not what I'm striving for and that's not what would be fun, I think, to watch either. Um, this is very reflective of me, my personalities. Any decisions I make in games are often brought on by whatever my life experiences are or biases or how I think or how I don't think sometimes or how I read something and maybe just it goes in one ear and right out the other. Um, but I always love bringing you guys 
this first playthrough of whatever it may be, whatever chaos ensues. We did end up discovering everything at the end of the day. It got a little choppy there in the last couple episodes and I ended up fast forwarding a lot of stuff with the brittle or dark bramble. I did end up figuring it out and I felt like by the last time where we grabbed the warp core, I really did feel like I had kind of figured it out at that point. I think it took me a couple trials to see how much I could push the angler fish and everything, but I think my favorite part about this game was every single part to it I felt was rough at first for me, and then I adapted and I learned and I kept continuing to get better and better at certain things. Maybe not landing, all right, landing was one of those things that it depended on how rushed I felt, you know? Uh, but yeah. We will, this isn't the end, this isn't goodbye. We will be back for Echoes of the Eye after I upload my Resident Evil Leon playthrough. But I will see you guys for Echoes of the Eye. I'm a little terrified because it says hide horrors. So there better not be any more anglerfish. I swanny. <laughs> I swanny. Um, but yes, please just share all of your thoughts and I'll continue to, I think maybe at the beginning of Echoes of the Eye, I'll probably bring forth at the very beginning some ideas and some more thoughts after I've sat on this game for a little bit for you guys. But thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this playthrough. And I really hope that it helped even just bring back some of the memories or some of the thoughts or feelings you had when you first played this game. Um, so thank you for coming along with me on my first playthrough of Outer Wilds. And I'll see you guys for the DLC. Bye, YouTube.